welcome back. So today I wanted to talk to you about yarn. So this is kind of going to be a yarn 101 to let you know the kind of the basics of yarn. So I am going to turn this camera around so you can see what is happening. So you can see all of this fun, beautiful yarn I have on the table here I have a variety of the different weights of yarn when it comes to yarn it comes in different weights and each weight is good for its own things so first off they start off with a zero and this is a zero weight it is crochet thread actually and this is me used to make doilies there are um, Christmas ornaments I make um, using this. I prefer my tree to be blue. <laughs> so that's why I have this blue um, thread as I was mixing it with a white and a blue. Anywho, so this is rather thin. So here at the, um, when I get done talking about the different kinds of yarn and weights, I'll put them all together so you can see how um, how they're different but you are going to need a really small hook or needle to be working with this particular yarn otherwise it turns into kind of a mess and it can get um, pulled funny and the whole nine yards which yeah which is not very conducive to a good project unless that is what you're going after so short of like I said short of doilies and um, Christmas ornaments, I don't necessarily work with this particular um, thread very often. The next size up is a one, and I believe this is my one, yep. And um, this one, unfortunately, this colorway, if you like this colorway, oh, let me get it in camera here. This colorway is actually discontinued, but I really love this yarn. It, it's perfect for, um, it's for socks, um, but it is super comfy. And so if you are looking for a good sock yarn, this is one that I, um, I would recommend. This one is actually 75% wool, so that kind of got me away from my um, straight, um, <laughs> my straight acrylic. <laughs> but um, I prefer, that's another thing too, is I'm gonna be getting into here in a little bit later, the difference between synthetic and natural. Um, but this is, this is actually a really fun yarn. Anywho, so that's mainly for socks. Another one you can use for socks is this uh, number two yarn for weight. And let me show you. And this is kind of strange because it seems to me like this, these two are actually quite similar. So here is the width of the one. Width of the two is about that. And this is also good for um, for sock yarn. This one is actually all acrylic, so it probably wouldn't be the best. Um, I will go with those that are um, particular on their socks. This is actually one you might not want to use for um, for socks. This is um, the Croy socks is actually a wool mixed with nylon, which makes it. Um, stretchier for socks. So this one's going to give you more wear time um, in theory than the um, Serenity. But I still kind of use it for sock yarn because when I make socks for my house, um, I'm generally making them for around the house and not to be on a foot shoved in a, so in a shoe. So I tend to use softer, you know, softer yarn for that. Now this is another acrylic yarn. This is the Lion Brand Ice Cream. This comes in a whole bunch of fun mixed variegated colors. Um, this is a size three. Let me find the end here. I'll pull it. Let's see if I can get this out here. There we go. So this is a little bit thicker. 
and I'll show you, like I said, I'll show you all, um, all of them side by side here in a minute. But this is actually really good for baby blankets. It's nice and soft. Um, and it's my go-to for baby blankets. Um, well, one of my go-tos. Um, so that's a size three. It's also um, a lighter drape um, for garments. So if, um, even though I probably wouldn't recommend acrylic for um, heavy use, um, garments. Um, it's soft enough that you could probably get away with um, like an outer garment, a, a cardigan or something of that nature. Then we have the kind of standard worsted weight yarn. So this is a number four yarn and um, worsted weight, which means it's probably the ones that I generally make it make blankets out of this but there are some garments that I am working um, as a, a matter of fact the pattern I'm working on uh, creating right now calls for a worsted weight although you can size down to a size 3 and it would be fine so this is a size 4 and this is one, um, especially in my patterns, I call for worsted weight or size four quite often, um, just for the fact that I have a lot of it in stock, a lot of it. And then this is size five, and this is considered a bulky yarn or a chunky yarn, um, depending on um, where you are. Um, here in the United States we call it bulky but it is pretty thick and um, here later on in my um, in the crochet version of this basics I am going to be talking about how to actually get this kind of yarn looking more um, and thicker that as as thick if this as this if not thicker if I could talk <laughs> so this is as high as I get in my stash but there is even thicker yarn that is a uh, super bulky and that is um, kind of like the um, I want to say that the blanket yarn falls under the super bulky um, category and here are those, as straight as I could get them, the Croy wants to fight with me. Um, but every once in a while you're going to see that it looks like, first off, I have fluff on there. Um, so there are going to be times that it actually looks like the one is um, actually thicker than the two. And that's just kind of how they've wound that up. It's amazing. It's, um, made of different plies. So this one just probably has a um, looser wound ply than this one does. That being, <laughs> that would be the reason as to that. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about was the labeling on the yarn. So when you pull this off the shelf, if you're shopping and you're looking for a particular, um, a particular yarn, for patterns, as far as my patterns, I know I generally go by the yardage. And both of these numbers, actually, the weight and the amount of length that is in a skein is both pretty important. But I, for the most part, will say um, give you a yards of yarn that you would need for the pattern. Um, quite a few patterns also tell you how many balls because if it is made particularly um, like uh, as a matter of fact on here um, it talks about having free patterns so you can find uh, free patterns on most yarn sites, um, yarn websites and they will actually tell you how many balls or skeins to use in the pattern. Um, that's generally because of the fact that um, they know how many skein or how many skeins it takes to make it. Plus, so they're able to give you more of an ounce 
Um, also, I do it so um, by yards a lot of times because of the fact that um, I wanted to be able to, um, I suggest a particular yarn. Um, so then that way you can go out and you can switch up yarn to your preference. And um, again, I do a lot with acrylic and not a lot of people, um, not everybody likes acrylic. I'll point, I'll just say that. Um, now, um, so on this particular label, you're going to see how heavy the, um, the skein is and how many yards that is. So if you are looking at a comparable yarn, those are the two, um, two things that you want to take into consideration if you're going to be changing up yarn for a pattern. Um, it also will tell you the, um, the weight of the yarn. So this is a number three. So this would be the bait, um, kind of the um, DK or light yarn. Also on this particular, I, I prefer Lion brand labels because I think they are so much easier to read than other labels. Um, but not too far off, here is the, the Craftsmart for just a, just to show you that it's on every label. Um, you're also going to get a recommendation for the gauge. So um, most gauges are four inches by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And so this, it tells you that in the standard, um, in the standard gauge, if you're using this for knitting, you'll get 22 stitches and 30 rows using a size five knitting needle. Or if you're crocheting using an H or size eight crochet hook, you're going to be getting 16 stitches across and 20 rows. That's kind of a, um, a baseline. Um, if you are, um, if you crochet or knit tighter or looser, that's going to be a bit of a difference. Um, but that's something to kind of think about. Also, when you're looking into like the patterns and stuff, that'll be telling you um, about how that particular yarn might be working. Also, wash instructions. Not all fibers can be washed. Not all fibers can be dried in the dryer. But, um, which is part of the reason why I kind of like acrylic more than other things, um, is the fact that it is kind of easy care. If you have a, um, if you're uh, knitting or crocheting for a baby, then mom or dad can just toss it in the washing machine, toss it in the dryer, and that gets them their blankie a lot faster than having to hand wash and, you know, line dry or whatever. Most yarns are not able to be ironed. Now this also has to say too about the acrylic. This is why I am also going to be interjecting this. If you are making anything that has to do with heat, do not use acrylic. Acrylic is basically plastic. Acrylic will melt. And I'm not saying it can melt. I'm saying it will melt. So if you are in the midst of working on um, on pot holders or hot pads or sometimes even when you're talking about hot uh, steaming hot plates going on placemats, you're gonna want to use um, pretty much what I use for that would be the cotton. Also, um, if it's going to be something that's going to be heavily chewed on by baby, one of the things that I make are teething biscuits that are that are made for um, for babies to chew on. That I also make cut make out of cotton, just for the fact that it's easier to get all of those germies out, <laughs> and it is also able to withstand higher heat. So you are able to. Um, even though acrylic is washable, dryable, the cotton is going to be a lot better for, um, for babies to be chewing on. 
also um, something that I also recently learned. Um, my friends got hermit crabs, and one of the things that she wanted, um, mom wanted me to make for um, the hermit crabs was a net to go into their aquarium. If you are going to be working on anything that is pet related as well, just because of the fact that pets kind of tend to chew and kind of get into some trouble, go with cotton. It's um, the least expensive um, when it comes down to um, cost wise. Um, it's least it's the least expensive. Anywho, so getting back to this particular um, skein of yarn, the next thing that I wanted to show you that it says is it talks about um, the color way that this particular yarn is. And very important if you're making a large project is the dye lot number. Dye lots um, often change. They, every time they mix a new ink or a new dye to dye the yarn, it's going to have a different dye lot. Another thing too, when it comes down to this kind of variegated stripey kind of yarn, there are, um, the dye lots actually might also include a length change when it comes down to the amount of length that one color stays active in the skein. So to make sure that your big project looks the best, you're gonna wanna get as many skeins, and if not all of the skeins you're gonna use, in the same dye lot. You run the risk of it being a different color, um, slightly off. A, month, a lot of times, big commercial, um, gets close, but not always the exact same. I, when I was about 15 years into my uh, crochet, <laughs> um, maybe even less than that, 10, 15 years into my crocheting, um, I started a blanket, put it down, um, and kind of forgot about it, went back to it, got more yarn, and then when I finished it with the same, um, same colorway but different dye lot yarn, you could definitely tell where it started and where it ended. I personally prefer to use acrylic. Like I said, it's easier for mom and dad to take that particular piece, toss it in the washing machine, toss it in the dryer, and they have their um, baby's lovey a little bit faster. Um, I Cotton, I'll work with. Cotton to me feels funny in my hands, though. And so I don't like to work large product projects in cotton. Also cotton being a natural fiber, um, synthetics are cheaper or in, more inexpensive than the natural fibers. So a lot of times um, if you're talking about acrylic, acrylic is probably the least expensive. Um, it used to be that acrylic, it was really scratchy and kind of not very fun. Um, one that you would want to use for you know blankets or something kind of similar to that. Um, not really fun. But acrylic has gotten softer. Um, it's gotten softer. I've I really tend to drift more towards the acrylic. With my customer base, quite a few of them, I think I would give them a coronary if I told them that their blank that just the yarn for their blanket was going to be three hundred dollars. I tend to stick with comfy yet cost effective. When you're getting into the natural fibers, natural fibers are a little bit more expensive to a lot more ex expensive. Um, you can get. Uh, skein, I want to say it's like four ounces of cotton for maybe about four bucks, depending on where you're at, uh, Joanne Fabric uh, Michaels. Um, there's smaller ones that they have uh, lingering around Walmarts. So those, kind of, I think, are going for about two 
at least in my area. Um, and sh when you're talking natural fibers, there's different sheep fibers, there's different alpaca. Uh, sometimes there's, um, I'm not really sure llama is really used. It's more alpaca fleece. Um, but there's uh, many different kinds of sheep fibers. Um, there's a ton. Anywho, that being, I don't play around with those very often because, um, quite frankly, um, twenty to thirty dollars uh, is kind of the most I will pay for fiber. Um, and if it's not going to get me a sock or a scarf or a hat, that's a little bit out of my my comfort zone, so to speak. Um, and then we're talking about the fibers that are going for anywhere from uh, a couple bucks an ounce to getting yourself up to this one yarn. I can't even remember the name of it. It starts with a V. Uh, and I know that I will butcher it if I try saying it now. And that runs about $300 for one ounce. And to give you a little bit of perspective, this is an ounce, 1.75 ounces for this socks cane. Um, I think I can get two socks out of it because um, I do the ankles, ankle socks. But $600 for socks, um, a bit out of my price range. Just, just a bit, just a tiny bit. So, um, that's a thing that I would be also, um, yes, I don't, I'm probably going to be sticking with my acrylic and my lower end naturals. Another thing you have to think about when it comes to natural fibers, actually any kind of fibers at all, um, people are allergic. So when you're, and that's one of the other reasons why I try to stick with acrylic, because I know of people who are allergic to wool, who are allergic to um, alpaca, who are just plain allergic to critter. <laughs> like, it's the easiest way to put it. They're just allergic to critters. So in order to make sure that they are, um, that my customers are comfy and they're not turning into welts or having breathing issues, um, acrylic is probably the least... Um, least likely to cause allergies. Am I saying that there is nobody out there who is allergic to acrylic? Anything is possible, so I am not going to sit here and tell you that acrylic is 100% um, allergen-free. So, yes, so allergies to acrylic could, could be a thing. Um, I personally have not met anybody with an, an allergy to acrylic, but if I'm pretty sure that if it's out there, it can be an allergy. My last point to this video today is if you are a newbie to fiber arts, whether it's crochet or knitting, I would tell you these are my... Um, these are my recommendations because I am going to be starting the crochet basics. I have my crochet hook. This is my go-to crochet hook size. It's an H. Whoops. It's upside down. <laughs> it's an H. Come on. There we go. It's an ergonomic boy. You can get them at Walmart. Um which is going to be, that's going to be ta um, handled in my next video. But um, get yourself a hook. Preferably, I would say about either H, I, or J if you're crocheting. If you're knitting, I would say um, a size... Um, would be the 5 millimeter U.S. size 8 is another, um, is one to go to as well. Um, and yes, I've just, <laughs> I just found that on my yarn, <laughs> um, yarn label. Um, 
couldn't remember. But yes, um, so start, uh, either a size 8 knitting needle uh, set or HI or J crochet hooks. And then when you go out to buy your yarn, I would recommend um, Loops and Thread Impeccable or the Craft Smart. These are both the worsted weight yarns, um, uh, both options for worsted weight yarn at Michael's. Joanne, I would recommend Big Twist Value. And you'd want to stay with the lighter colors because it's easier to see your stitches. Or at anywhere, Michael's, Joanne's, um, Walmart, Amazon, you can probably find these other ones on, um, on Amazon as well, but, um, pretty much anywhere yarn is sold, Red Heart Super Saver. These are the easiest yarns to work with. They're all like the worsted weight acrylic, but it's a good start as far as, um, just playing around it, they're pretty forgiving yarns um, if you need to keep ripping them out. Eventually, they will kind of fray out um, if you take them out and pull on them very, you know, a lot. Um, but these are what I would recommend for any of my students who are taking the in-person classes for this. Um, this is what I would recommend to them. Grab an H, I, or J size hook and a skein of a light color of their choice for um, these one of these four uh, brands of yarn. That being said, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so that way you are going to be seeing the rest of my um, series. I am going to be starting the crochet. Um, this is kind of officially the start to the crochet here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be starting the knitting version of the basics and I would so love for you to join me. Have a wonderful day.